Hello, everybody. My name is uh, Bennett Tchaikovsky. I'll just do a quick video. Uh, hello. Welcome, everybody. Um, so this is my video that's talking about the comparison of netbook value to market capitalization. So my disclaimer and copyright notice, the information and opinions in this presentation are those of the author only and not the author's employers or affiliated organizations, including but not limited to the South Orange County Community College District. The presentation is for educational purposes only and does not account, constitute any legal accounting and or advice to purchase, sell, or hold securities whatsoever. This presentation is copyright 2021 by Bennett Tchaikovsky. I encourage you to share this presentation and links to the presentation on an unmodified basis. If you do modify the presentation anyway, please email me prior to doing so at bennett1812 at gmail.com to discuss. Note the author does not claim any copyright whatsoever in any companies or organizations mentioned in this presentation, rather the other parties are the owners of their respective copyrights. Okay. Let's talk really quickly about what is net book value. So one of the most important financial statements that a company has is its balance sheet. It tells us on a certain date what its assets are. What are assets? Assets are those items that are giving us future economic benefit. It could be cash. It could be inventory. And if we take a look at right here, every company's balance sheet is uniquely different because every different every company has its own way of going through and doing business. So if I come over here and look at a company like Tesla, right? Tesla's balance sheet is going to be very different than that of something. Uh, say comparison to like a company like AMC or Facebook, right? So assets are tells us basically from an accounting perspective, those items that are giving us future economic benefit. So the coming back over here, if I rewrite this equation, and if I say assets minus my liabilities gives us our owner's equity, this can tell us what the owner's residual interest is in of the assets from an accounting standpoint. Very, very important that what we see on the financial statements is not necessarily going to be reality, but it gives us a good base to compare numbers. And also too, when we see financial data being published, this are, these are different items that have been at least been reviewed by independent auditors or audited by the auditors. So there's some positives to accounting, but let's talk a little bit about accounting limitations. One of the things that accounting is not going to pick up is that if a company spends significant money doing research and development, it's not going to be picked up necessarily directly onto the financial statements. To give you an example of this for Tesla, when you drive a Tesla, I'm assuming that the data as you're driving is going back to Tesla so they can make better vehicles. From an accounting standpoint, we do not go through and record that as a transaction. So accounting has a lot of limitations, which is why it's important for you to study accounting so you can know what it does not uh, encompass or what it does not pick up in terms of transactions. Also, there's also some other limitations too. There are some items that show up on the balance sheet that are really gross ups of the financial statements. An example of this is a lease. If I sign a five year lease to be to you know, lease the space of a building, even though I don't own that building, I have to record an asset and a related liability. The other limitation with accounting is that there are some expenses, right, or costs against those revenues that don't really cost the company anything in terms of cash. A great example is if I give stock options to my executives, yes, my company will see dilution, but that doesn't cost me anything. So, but I have to record it as an expense for accounting purposes. So we're gonna be looking at net book value because this is really important because we can actually have a basis in reality, even though keep in mind what these different limitations are. So 
The other side of this, so if this is what the auditors and the accountants are going through and saying that, hey, this is you know, how the company should be recording its information from an accounting perspective, how do the investors value it? And this is very, very different. So this is a concept in terms of what we call market capitalization or market cap. And my son says cap, meaning it's a lie. That's, I think of Captain America. I don't know, first Avenger, Winter Soldier. But for our purposes here, what is market capitalization? Market capitalization is going to be the outstanding shares, meaning those shares that the company has issued times the market, or I should really say the company, shares the company has issued that still remain in the control hold of the public times the market price per share. This gives us our market capitalization. And it's really about what investors believe that a company is worth and are basically willing to pay, pay for a share of stock. So what I've done is we're gonna do this with a couple different companies. Round one is Tesla, okay? And I'm taking Tesla and Tesla is not a direct comparable to Ford and GM, but it's close enough. But part of the reason why I'm comparing these two is because they also sell cars. Now, very, very different business models, right? And it's, but just, just to kind of give you a little bit of perspective. If I pull up the financial statements of these companies, and let's first go to Tesla. And this is something you can do on your own. I'm going to leave you links on how to look up filings with the Securities and Exchange Commission. But if I go over here to Tesla, this is as of February 1st, Tesla's most recent filing is right over here. It was their quarterly report for the period ended or based right here. It's as of September 30th, 2020. If I look at my assets, it's at 45.6 billion, right? Assets are those items that are giving us future economic benefit. A lot of different items counts as assets. Less my liabilities or those items that I actually have to essentially settle or repay, right? Or right, I have to perform services on. This is about 28.1 billion. If I subtract those two right here, I get my owner's equity of roughly around 16.8 billion, okay? Now, let's compare that to Ford. So Ford Motor Company, right over here, they have assets of $258 billion. They also have liabilities of $225 billion. So right over here, the owner's equity is almost double that of Tesla. If I look at GM or General Motors right over here, when I take a look at the balance sheet of General Motors, I'll leave links all this for the bottom of the presentation, right over here, 239 billion of total assets. We've got 191 billion of liabilities. So right over here, the owner's equity is gonna be about $48 billion. And by the way, on the Ford, if I didn't do this, their total assets were 259 billion. Ford, for some reason, puts their most recent numbers at the very far right. So if I didn't put that there, which I think I did do, but that's where those numbers are coming from. So in terms of just looking at it from a book value standpoint or net book value, which I'm calling assets minus liabilities, gives us the owner's equity. So right over here, from a book value standpoint, Tesla is the lowest of the bunch. Now, if I look at the market capitalization, okay, and by the way, I'm not saying that Tesla is worth less than Ford or GM. This is just from strictly an accounting standpoint, because clearly there are items that Tesla has that the other two major automakers do not. So if now I look at here and say to myself, well, if this is how we're recording it or we're looking at it from an accounting perspective, how do we look at this? How do the investors look at these companies? Now, if I take the shares outstanding of each of these companies. So for example, for Tesla, what you're gonna notice right over here is that it says down in equity, it says common stock. 
right over here, 948. What that means is 948 million. So that means I have 948 million shares that are outstanding. Now, if I multiply this by the stock price per share, right over here, this is as of February 1st or of 839.81, what I'm going to get is my calculated market value of 796.1 billion. Multiply shares outstanding times the market price per share, and this is my calculated value. If I come over here to Tesla stock price, you're going to notice a lot of different values here. And so what we're really trying to go through and look at here is what is the market cap. So we just calculated the market cap to be $796.1 billion. So we're pretty close to this. So we're going to use Google's number because Google's always right. Okay, for Ford, if I come over here to the Ford Motor Company, what I'm going to notice is like for Ford, okay, I've got 4 million 25, uh, four, basically this is 4 billion 25 million shares. So over here for Ford, using this number, and Ford's market price is $10.83 per share. So my market cap value is roughly about $43.6 billion. But Google, or again, we're just going to be used. This is just, as, again, something you can do on your own. I always like knowing where the numbers come from. But over here for Google, I can kind of see this right over here. This is going to be at $42.32 billion. Okay, so right over here, that's the market cap of Google. The market cap for General Motors or for GM, I had to go a little bit digging deeper because if we come over here to GM, they're a little bit sneaky. When we go to GM, it says, I go to equity, common stock. Uh, where did common stock go? Oh, it's note 18. So I gotta go down the financial statements and come down here to note 18. And when I see note 18, and boy, is this exciting. I guess the, the suspense, we don't know what to do. So this is note 12, da, 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 da. note 19, and we go to over here to note 18. So right over here, we have 2 billion shares and five point, we had no shares of preferred stock and 1.4 billion shares of common stock issued and outstanding. So we had 1.4 billion shares outstanding, meaning those are ones that are in the hands of outside investors, not with the company. The market price per share is $51.51. So the market capitalization that we calculate or that I calculated was 72.1 billion. Per Google, it is 73.73 billion. Now, what do we do with these market capitalizations and when we go through and compare this to basically the net book value. Well, what's really kind of cool is that one of the things that I love about my job as an accounting professor is I learn about things every day. And this is something that is not in the textbook that I use, which is not a surprise. That textbook is, well, it's a good doorstop. But right over here, what is the market to book ratio or price to book? So if we take the market capitalization and divide it by the total book value, this is really going to be telling us how, how investors are viewing the value of the company. And I'm not saying that this is a way of saying a stock is overvalued or undervalued. Remember, Tesla is very different than Ford and GM. Tesla, many people consider it to be a technology company. Also, Tesla has no dealer network. That is a huge deal. So if we look over here, if I take the market capitalization, I divide this by our net book value, we get right over here, market cap divided by net book value. Tesla is trading at 47 times their net book value. Ford is at 1.3 times and GM is 1.5 times. So this is how highly investors are looking at Tesla. People are saying that this is gonna be an amazing company and it's, it's, they've done revolutionary things, a lot of different things to come. But I can tell you right now, a lot of these EV companies are looking at this and they're saying, wow, we need to get into that space. So that's for those three automakers. Let's take a look at some other companies. 
So the first one over here we're going to look at is GameStop, right? If I come over here to GameStop, I'm going to pause real quick. So if I come over here and look at GameStop, GameStop has assets of 2.6 billion, liabilities of 2.2 billion. So their owner's equity is about $332 million. Right. So again, October 31st, 2020, this is unaudited information. Assets 2.6, these are in millions of dollars. 2.6, liabilities of 2.2 billion. So their owner's equity or their net book value is about 332 billion. The next one we're going to look at is Bed Bath and Beyond. If I go to Bed Bath and Beyond as of November 28, 2020, Bed Bath and Beyond has 6.9 billion of assets. They have 5.5 billion of liabilities. So their owner's equity is going to be 1.3 billion. But the one thing I wanna share with you is that as you're looking at Bed Bath & Beyond, and they're almost kind of similar to Home Depot, you're gonna see some huge in their shareholders equity here, this thing called treasury stock, okay? This is not a treasure hunt in Red Dead Redemption 2. What this is, is a, it's essentially when companies buy back their own shares. If Bed Bath & Beyond had not done this, theoretically, they'd have another $10.8 billion of cash on their balance sheet. So it's something that I'm just kind of pointing out to you that when we look at these numbers, you might say, oh my God, this looks terrible. No, it's because they've repurchased so many of their own shares back. So again, Bed Bath & Beyond, right over here, their net book value is 1.4 billion. But just remember, they have a lot of treasury stock. Okay, AMC Entertainment Holdings. They had 10.8 billion of assets. They had 13.2 billion of liabilities. They have a deficit of 2.3 billion as of November 30th. The one thing though that I will share with you though about AMC is that this is somewhat deceiving. And the reason why is that when you look at their quarterly report that basically came out back here on November 4th, they've had a lot of things going on. And right over here, if we look at the balance sheet of AMC, they have class A and class B. And so this is roughly about, um, say roughly about uh, 58 million, 51 billion, about 109 million. But when I come over here and I look at, you know, they over here to, you know, what is the current going on with AMC, shares outstanding is 287.28 million. So since they issued their quarterly report, they've had a lot of issuances. They've had debt that's converted into common stock. So you're seeing kind of a lot of action with AMC, which is the reason why I am not going to be doing it because um, trying to figure out how to get that 287 is not enough for this call. So instead, I decided to go to my friendly favorite, uh, Spider-Man or what I call Facebook. Facebook has assets of $159 billion dollars they have liabilities of only 31 billion and their owner's equity is roughly about 128.29 billion. So Facebook financially from a financial accounting standpoint is very, very strong. Now, when I look at market capitalization, okay? So I didn't do AMC, right? But I'm gonna go ahead and do GameStop. GameStop has 65.2 million shares outstanding. Okay, their market price per share is 225. Market capitalization is 14.6 billion. So that's what I calculated it at. Google was at about 15.69 billion. Again, I like to do this just so I know where the numbers are coming from. GameStop right over here, 65.2 million shares. So that's where that's, this number is coming from right over here. Bed Bath & Beyond, their share is outstanding. You have to look at this a little bit more carefully because it says they've issued this 
and there's about 121 million shares outstanding because they've repurchased over 222 million of their own shares. They're not the only company that does this. Home Depot, I believe Avon might also do it too, but I know Home Depot, huge repurchaser of shares. So right over here, right, I take 121 million shares, multiply it by the current price per share as of, uh, right over here as of February 1st, and I end up getting a market cap of 3.67 billion, which is close to what Google has it at. Lastly, Facebook. Facebook has 2.8 billion shares outstanding. With Facebook though, you have to look a little bit more carefully. And the reason why you have to look at Facebook a little bit more carefully is, let me try to figure this out right over here. Okay. And the reason why we are gonna look at this a little bit more carefully is because for Facebook, Facebook has two different classes of common stock. So if I were to go through and to do this over here for Facebook by looking at the balance sheet, I have to add up the class A shares, which were 2,406,000,000 million shares out issued and outstanding, and then 4 million, uh, excuse me, and then 443 million of the class B. Now these class B shares have 10 times voting power. So that's how Mr. Zuckerberg will never get voted out of Facebook, at least in the near future. So this, these, are, these class B shares are not publicly traded, but when they go through and they do that calculation in terms of market cap, right over here, they came up with 746 uh, billion in terms of the market cap. The way that they're getting this is they're including those class B shares. So market price per share is 262.01. This is what Facebook is trading at as of uh, February 1st. And then I come over here. So my calculated market cap is 746 billion, but we'll go ahead and use Google. Now, to do the same thing with that market to book, market value to book ratio, right? So this is market to book ratio. So this website right over here, CFI, thank you so much for helping us out today. So right over here for these companies, the market cap for GameStop is 15.69 billion. Their net book value is 332 million. GameStop is right now trading at Tesla numbers or 47.25 times over their net book value. Bed Bath & Beyond is trading at 2.62 times. Facebook is trading at 5.82 times. Now, the thing I would also kind of share with you too is when you're looking at this, the financial numbers are really can kind of be a basis, but we have to remember what those are not being included. But this is a great way of, of one of many different ratios that you can look at in terms of telling whether or not a company is over or undervalued. So I wanna thank you for watching here today. If you have questions, please feel free to send me an email or leave a comment on this video. And I look forward to seeing you on the next video. Have a great one.